Ba, 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 ba. Take three. What's up everybody? I'm Mitch. This is the Fit for Moto YouTube channel. Now real quick, head over to www.fitformoto.com, F-I-T-F-O-U-R-M-O-T-O.com. Check out the new thing we got going on. I'm super pumped about it. It is the Fit for Moto Academy. We've got podcasts. We've got a members only area where you get exclusive content, behind the scenes videos. You get unedited stuff. You get ad free stuff. Lots of extra stuff. So make sure you head over, check out that members only area. We got merch now, which is cool. We got hoodies, we got hats, we got shirts, lots of cool stuff. We are leveling up the Fit for Moto channel, everything all together, a whole bunch. So make sure you check that out. Now, Today's video is all about sprint motos versus regular motos. In what circumstance would you want to do a sprint moto when you come out and ride versus when do you want to just go out and grind out some actual motos? Well, there are a couple benefits, a couple pros and cons to each one depending on what you need to work on. So let's, uh, let's roll the intro and let's talk about those. sprint moto now what is it first of all well a sprint row is typically something where you go out and you're going as fast as you possibly can but for a short duration so maybe one lap maybe two laps maybe three laps if you can pull it off what is the benefit to that well here's the thing when you're doing those sprint motos a you're going to push yourself to ride at a pace that is not well within your comfort zone right so you might corner a little faster you might dive a little deeper into the corners you might try and pick the speed up in some areas that you don't generally do it when you're going and you're trying to do like a 15 minute moto i hope that makes sense so that's one benefit of it you're going to try and increase your speed a little bit now secondly depending on what your current physical training is, you may be able to push your body, push your heart rate into some zones that it's not used to getting into. And that's fantastic because that's going to increase your base cardio level and it's going to get your body a little more used to running at that pace. Now again, you may only be able to do it for one lap, you may be able to do it for two or for three, but the point is, is you're kind of pushing that threshold a little bit when you do it. Now, what are the downsides to sprint motos? Well, as you can imagine, if you're going all out, big thing is people are going to get arm pumped. Guys are going to get pumped right up because they're riding outside of that skill level that they're comfortable riding in. I hate to tell you, that's what arm pump is all about. You're riding past what you're comfortable doing. So you start to hang on a little tighter. You're not in that flow. You start to get nervous, right? Because you're not used to riding at that pace. The better you get, the faster the pace goes, the quicker you can go without getting arm pump. It's really kind of that simple. So one of the downsides to doing sprint motos is you're gonna get some arm pump probably because you're riding just above what your comfortability zone is when you're doing the motos. Side number two is, again, when you're riding at that level, you might be a little more on the edge of having a little mistake, having a little whoopsie daisy and hitting the dirt. Now, that obviously can be controlled, just throttle back what you're doing a little bit. So you do have to find a balance between pushing your heart rate, pushing your threshold, pushing your comfortability zone with still riding at a safe level, right? So if you can do this for one or two laps, again, you need to, you need to keep the reins in a little bit. This isn't, this isn't a reason to just go out and ride way, way over your head and possibly get hurt. This is just about riding just a little bit above, like 5% above what you can do or 10% above what you can do for a long moto. Now, when I say long moto, for me, that may mean, you know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, something really, really long. But for anyone else, that also may mean maybe you can do five minutes, maybe you can do 30 minutes. Whatever it is that your moto level can do. Let's say you can do, I can do 15 minutes comfortably. I can do 15 minutes, no problem, pull off and I'm good. Okay, so whatever that pace is, try and go 5% faster than that, but only do it for like two laps. Like I said, there's a couple pros and cons to it, but I do find if you mix those into your training, it's gonna help you big time. Regular motos. So we've talked about what a sprint moto is. You probably already know what a regular moto is. Like I said, it's something you can do for 15 minutes-ish and feel totally comfortable doing it. That's fantastic. But what is the benefits, the pros and cons? So when would you want to just do the regular moto? Well, if you can do your regular motos for 15 minutes or so, I would say back down what you're doing by 5%, maybe 10%. 
When you do that, the benefit is you're going to be able to stretch out your moto length, and that's for a couple reasons. One is your exercise level, your base fitness level. If you back it down a little bit, you should be able to draw that out a little bit. That's going to help increase your base cardio level. And again, when you start to reach deeper into that well of fatigue, you're going to be able to ride a little longer, a little faster, right? Makes you a safer rider, makes you a faster rider, hands down. Now the other benefit to that is you get super comfortable riding at that level. So as you start to pick up the pace from including your sprint motos, it's not gonna be as big of a deal because you're building your confidence as you pick the speed up. Reason number two is that when you back it down five or 10%, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna get rid of your arm pump. You're not gonna ride so tense. You're gonna relax a little bit because you're not, you're not riding right on that edge of what you're comfortable doing. Your arm pump goes away. Now here is the benefit of that. As your arm pump goes away, obviously it's safer, but your vision is going to open up. You will be able to see different lines, different sections on the track that you never saw before. Maybe there's these big braking bumps and now you can double into them. Whereas before, when you're riding at your just most intense and just, you know, you're right into it and you're going as fast as you possibly can, it's really, really hard for riders to open up their vision and be able to see options that they didn't see before. And this is one of the benefits that pros can do that separates them from amateur riders, is they're so comfortable riding at that pace, their vision is opened up. So they're thinking three corners ahead, they're thinking four corners ahead. They come into a section like, hey, I'm gonna double these braking bumps or whatever it is, or I'm gonna you know, take this single, I'm gonna treat it like a double past this big hump or whatever it may be. But the bottom line is that they're riding comfortably at that level, so their vision opens up. So if you do the same thing during your regular motos, back it down five or 10%, your arm pump's gonna go away, you're going to be able to open your vision, pick different lines on the track, experiment a little bit, but still have the energy and the gas in the tank that you're gonna be able to do that safely. It's another huge benefit of just doing like regular motos. It, man there's sprint motos there's regular motos sprint motos have a purpose pros and cons regular motos have a purpose pros and cons now here's the thing if you want the unedited version of this video where I talk about how you should do each one and how I would incorporate that into my daily training on the track or whatever it is head over to fitformoto.com become a member you'll have access to the video we'll talk all about it I'll see you over there thanks for checking out this video we'll see you in the next one